Today's episode of the Bitcoin Show is brought to you by usgoldcoins.com. That's 1-800-HOT-COIN and Mezzy Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com and Mt. Gox, M-T-G-O-X.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bitcoin Show. This is Tuesday, July 19th, and this is episode 25. We've got a really big day today because with us, for the second time on the air, um, we have uh, Mark Carpales, Carpales, did I say it right? And Adam Turner, from live from Tokyo, Mount Gox. The, uh, uh, Mark Carpales is the owner of uh, Mt. Gox, the number one exchange site everyone knows, 90% market share, something like that. The, the guys have been around the longest and the biggest. And um, you guys, we're doing this at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning in New York because it's 9 p.m. in Tokyo. Is that right? Yeah. Almost 10. Almost 10 at this point, yeah. We had a little technical difficulties getting started. But what we want to talk about is uh, two things. One is uh, the two-factor authentication that Mt. Gox has, has out now, and there's a lot of buzz about it. It's, I mean, it's, it's been out for a little while, but people are talking about it and they're wondering, like, how, what is it like, how does it work and all that. So we want to actually do that, go through the process and demonstrate it because I got mine yesterday. And then you guys have a big announcement a little bit later in the show about an acquisition, some sort of a Mt. Gox acquiring some other company. So that's going to be big. So stay tuned for that. So let's first talk about this YubiKey. What's the deal? How long have you guys been working on this YubiKey thing? How long have you been working on the YubiKey thing? Oh. Well, we've been working on this for about two or three weeks before opening the actual uh, YubiKey offer. We've been uh, Testing it quite a lot. Fifteen what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so about, about three weeks, right? About three weeks. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Well, I got mine yesterday via FedEx, and it, it says uh, I got a, a letter on the on the Mt. Gox new stationery. Do you see their new logo? I like that. And uh, it's right from Japan, and it says, "Dear Bruce Wagner." Your Mt. Gox account, Bruce Wagner, has been enabled to support two-factor authentication. And for those of you who don't know what that means, two-factor just means that you have to have more than one thing. Like your ATM card, you've got your card and your PIN number. So you have to have two things. That way if somebody steals one thing, they're not going to get in. You have to have two things. So it's two-factor authentication. Please find the attached YubiKey. And this is this little YubiKey. And you know what's really funny? I don't know if you guys saw that. It's, it was actually like affixed to the paper like this. It was kind of like glued on. And I swear, when I pulled this out of the FedEx envelope, I thought it was just a picture of the YubiKey. And I'm looking in the envelope going, where's the YubiKey? I don't see it. I'm expecting some kind of an electronic gadget or a box or something. And then I look closer at the letter, and it's actually glued right onto it. It's like as thin as a credit card. It's like this tiny little wafer. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like minuscule. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's actually it. It's not a picture of it. And uh, it says uh, my serial number, which will log me into my Mt. Gox account. So um, then it explains there are two ways to use it. You can touch the round part. And I, at first, I thought that was part of the circuitry, but it's actually this, this um, like gold or brass colored um, circle. It says you can touch it for one second, and the first OTP, which is just a special password code, is generated. And that's what's required for trading. And if you enable withdrawal protection, the password you need for withdrawal is generated by touching uh, and keeping your finger on it and holding it down for at least two seconds and releasing. So it's a different password that you get for making withdrawals. Is that right? Is that right, guys? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, it's exactly right. Okay. So there's okay. two modes that uh, the YubiKey operate in a quick press and a long press. Good. So depending on what you're doing. It better be right because I read it right from the letter. So here's what we're going to do. I want to, I want to, uh, let me bring up uh, Mt. Gox. So I want to actually try this um, right here on the air with you guys so you, so you guys can see how easy this is. And um, honestly, br right before, I mean, <laughs> Before this show right now, I have not uh, done it until, until just this morning. 
So this is my screen, and I'm literally going to click log in. And um, it still requires my username and password, so I have to go over here to my uh, KeyPass X. And I'm, you know, I don't even know my username. I'm so lazy. I just copy my username, and then I'll copy my password. And of course, the whole world knows my password now. So, but it won't matter. So, <laughs> because I click log in, and it says YubiKey. Now, this is uh, I, I did experiment with this like literally just seconds ago right before we started taping. And if you look at this camera here, you'll see, okay, the, the YubiKey goes, inserts to a USB slot, but I made the mistake, it's really, really thin. It's not a normal USB, it's like half as thick. And you can insert it the wrong way. And the way you want, if you insert it the wrong way, it does absolutely nothing, because the metal contacts are not touching anything. You have to insert it with the circle up, okay? So when you insert it, you should see the circle up, and when you do, there's actually a, a green LED light that lights up in the middle of the circle. That's how you know you've made contact. Plus it goes ding ding, the windows ding ding thing. All right, so anyway, it's plugged in. It doesn't matter if I leave it plugged in all the time or should I, I really should put it on my key ring or something and carry it with me, right? Is that the idea? Sorry, we're having a hard time hearing you. Oh, I was saying that um, it, does it, it doesn't really matter if it's plugged in all the time or you just plug it in when you're gonna use it, either way. Right. Yeah, just when you need it. When you need it, okay. Yeah. And it's got a hole so you could literally put it on your key ring. I can see, you know, when you, when you go to the grocery store and you get these little key fobs, these little plastic cards that they scan at every single grocery store and every single drug store, I can see us having like 100 Yubi keys for every website we go to. But anyway, at this point, um, you just plug it in and it's asking, if you look at my screen there, you'll see it says Yubi key. And I just literally touched it. I just barely, barely, barely touched it. And it popped in my password and logged me in without doing anything else. I didn't press anything else. Let's do that again. That was really fun. Okay, I'm going to hit log out. <laughs> I'm going to hit log in. Like I said, I'm just going to log in and out, log out all day because this is so fun. All right, let me put in my password. And um, that's the hard part. Then I hit log in. Now, literally, uh, go to my screen and I wa watch. I'm literally just going to barely touch that circle for less than a second and it pops in my password and logs me in without touching anything else. That's it. And you see I have no money whatsoever. But anyway, that's how you get in. It's, it's amazing. The coolest part of this is that nobody, from now on, from the minute that I register this U U YubiKey, um, no one is ever going to be able to get into my account without it, right? Yeah, exactly. So what uh, will happen when you uh, when you buy a YubiKey and we actually put it through the shipping process, you'll get an email. Uh, after that point, you will probably, when you log into Mt. Gox, you'll see a uh, OTP, like the YubiKey. It'll prompt you to put in that password. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you can't use it until you receive the key. Once you do get the key, um, you obviously use it, you're registered, and then you can use it forever thereafter. Okay, so I, I will be out lock, sort of locked out of my account for the, the time period that it's shipping to me. Because once it's no, set up, no? No, it'll, just, it'll prompt for it, um, and you can just enter through it. Until you actually use the YubiKey, mm -hmm. um, it won't, uh, you won't need it. Oh, so the first, uh, so when it'll prompt for it, I can, just hit, I can just skip past it and it'll let me log in. But the first time I use it, from that point on, it will always require it. Oh, yeah, that's, it activates. that's clever. Okay, so that activates it. Oh, okay, that's clever. So I'm not locked out of my account in the meantime. Okay, cool. Now, this is really small. It's really convenient. I can put it on my key ring. What happens if I lose it? What happens if you... If I literally you, lose the Yubi key. Lose it. Uh, if I drop it down the, you know, the, through the, yeah, the we'll, drain. Yeah, exactly. we'll, we'll send you, like, we'll send a customer another one if, uh, if they need it, of course. Uh -huh. um, best way is to, I guess, contact us. Yeah, before yeah. I came to go. Yeah, okay. uh, so just info at mtbox.com and uh, we'll okay. jump right on it. Okay, but you already have, uh, you're obviously already going to have my shipping address and everything because you sent me one before, so you'll know that you can, you'll know that it's me because you're shipping it to me and we'll be in correspondence with the email address that's on my account and so, so forth, so that's still secure. No, I mean, nobody can... Uh, uh, imitate me and say that they lost it and have it shipped somewhere else, you're going to be uh, obviously aware of that. Right? There's so much chop right now, Bruce. So oh, okay. I know. We're, we're uh, you know, the miracle of Skype all the way from New York to Tokyo. 
But um, uh, no, I was saying that you know you're you're not gonna you're gonna verify the identity before you send it to someone. <laughs> it's not any better. So not any better. Yeah, maybe just uh, if you talk slower, maybe we can make out what you're. Okay. okay. No, I was just saying that if if I lose it and you have to send a new one, then you're gonna be very careful to identify who it is you're shipping it to. You're gonna ship it to the same person. Same yeah, address. exactly. We wouldn't, we wouldn't ship it to a new address unless you know we uh, we got some more information. More verification. Okay, cool. All right. Well, this is fantastic because the two-part or two-factor authentication, as we've been talking about, is obviously very, very important. We've learned a lot of lessons. Everybody has learned a lot of lessons uh, recently with everything that's happened, and uh, we know that it's so important that you know even online banking doesn't have this level of security. I know with my online banking, I don't have any two-part, two-factor authentication yet. So um, it's, it's a very, very good thing. Uh, what is the status on people recovering their accounts since the hack? Like how many, what percentage of the accounts would you say have been recovered? How many accounts have been recovered? And turn this speaker, this speaker down. So far, so far we are about at 45%. Most of the remaining accounts are inactive accounts anyway, so... Would you say 45%? 45% of accounts, which makes up for about 99.9% .9 of all the funds deposited on empty gods. Oh, okay. So 45% of the accounts, which makes up how, what percent of the assets? It's the active accounts, the accounts that are actually holding balances and are in use. Okay, so pretty much everybody who's active is back for the most part. And I see the price is coming back to it. The 20 is the, um, by the way, the trade data on Mt. Gox, I've always wondered this. Um, when it shows the uh, trade data, the uh, high and low, is that for 24 hours or 48 hours on the actual web page itself? Yeah, it's for, it's for 24 hours, Bruce. Okay, so in the last 24 hours, as of this moment, it's reached a high of 1470. So it's creeping back up again. As uh, everybody, <laughs> one of my uh, catchphrases they, I, they say that I say is up, up, up. I don't recall saying that, but anyway, <laughs> apparently I have. And the low was 1251, so it's, uh, it's starting to gain again, it looks like. And that's a good thing. And now the weighted average, oh, the weighted average, that's new. That's, what is the weighted average? How are you figuring that out? How are we figuring out the weighted average? Now the weighted average is a volume, a volume weighted average price. Mm -hmm. So basically it's the average price on 24 hours um, weighted by volume. Weighted by the volume uh, of each trade. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like that a lot. So that's, that's, a, that's a much more accurate... Sorry? Sorry. Yeah, we think it's a bit more accurate. Yeah, yeah. a lot more accurate yeah. in, as opposed to the last price. The last price could be, you know, $12, but that's just because the very last moment somebody sold a hundredth of a Bitcoin at that price. But a weighted average tells you over the last 24 hours the weighted average. Now, the volume is also for 24 hours? Yeah, it's all a moving window. Everything's a window of 24 hours from this moment past. Yeah. And that's, uh, is the volume in dollars or Bitcoins? No, uh, Bitcoins. Oh, it's in Bitcoins. Okay. You see, that's a good th question because somebody told me the other day it was dollars, but it's actually Bitcoins. Okay. So it's 24-hour volume of Bitcoins and the weighted average. I like that. And the high and the low is the highest and the lowest for the last 24 hours. And then the, the actual spread, you have to go into market depth, right? Because uh, if you want to see the, the lowest, um, I guess, the highest bid or the lowest ask, you have to go into market depth to see that information. Is that right? Having some trouble hearing you again, oh, Bruce. You know, if you want to see the lowest ask and the highest bid, you have to go into market depth to see those numbers. That spread. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Just understanding the data. All right. Cool. So I see. Obviously, um, the you guys have um, some other announcements too about uh, other currencies. Now you you. You started doing euro transfers, and the, uh, the I see the status here. It says that they're temporarily frozen, so we're not doing euro transfers at this moment. Is that right? 
Yeah, at this moment in time, everything is effectively frozen while we work with our bank to get uh, to get our account up and active. So mm -hmm. uh, ETA is this Thursday, hoping to get everything running by Friday. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at trying to get something else set up in the main meantime, just in case there's other delays that we run into. So, Did the bank um, have a problem with it being a cryptocurrency? Is that what it was? Or did they, did they contact you? Or how did that happen? Do they do they actually have a? Do they say that they've got a problem with the cryptocurrency or just? No. That they don't? Well, they don't have an opinion on this. They just see it, it as a risk. So it's yeah, they risk. they just like this is risky. So. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. generic excuse. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's kind of like these people who are accepting Mastercard and Visa, and um, you know, I say it's easy to open a bank account. So. And there's nothing illegal about having multiple bank accounts. So always have three or four or five bank accounts. And that way, if you know, it, it's not surprising if the banking industry has a problem with these types of things. Um, I think it's a good idea to always have a couple more bank accounts just waiting in the wings. But I don't know, just an, just a thought for everybody out there. If you're if you're in a startup or something like that where you're going to accept uh, Mastercard or Visa um, or some sort, anything that is going to be a possibility that a bank might find out that it's related to cryptocurrency and say, no, you know, they'll make up an excuse about risk or whatever, and they just shut you down. It's a good thing to, to actually have um, a backup bank account, to have multiple bank accounts, you know? Yeah, you guys could tw tweak your volume down just a little bit, like on your speakers. I think maybe that's coming back. I don't think it's on our end. Okay. <laughs> So uh, anyway, multiple bank accounts, I think, is a good idea as a backup. Now, the, so any, uh, do you have any ETA on when the euro situation will be resolved? We're hoping by this Friday. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if we hear good news back on Thursday, 100%, we'll get it back up within, I don't know, hours. Okay. Um, okay. But we don't know what, uh, we're hoping that they're going to get back to us with an, an A-OK. -okay. Yes. There's really no reason that they should be able to say no to us. Um, right. Seems like more of a branch issue at this point. So. Oh, okay. It's the same <laughs> bank you're going to be dealing with or are you changing banks? You're still working with the same bank? No, it's a new bank, uh, SG. I can't, yeah. SNG? Yeah, so apparently the, the local branch doesn't have the authority to uh, set up the account due to, I think, the amount of funds that we plan on moving in and out. So. Mm. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. So we'll know something by then. And um, also, the uh, ex the you're still continuing the zero point three percent trade fees now through continuing through August 9th. Is that the plan? Yeah. Up until August 9th, we're going to keep it at zero point three um, for everyone, so they can take advantage of that. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, very um, competitive. After that, we're going back to our standard trade fees. Then back to the standard for trade fees. Okay, cool. And then the standard trade fees are 0 0.65, right? You got it. Yeah. Okay, and 0 0.3 until August 9th. So that's cool. Um, also, about the back to the YubiKey, um, what's the cost of, of one of these things? How much does it cost? Yeah, so all in, uh, it's $29.99. $29.99 including everything. A floating, a floating rate for the, uh, for the Bitcoin purchase, I do yeah. believe. A floating rate? What was it? Yeah, we ship it with mess. Uh, that's all. Like I said, it's all in. So, the the twenty nine ninety nine is all that you know a customer would pay. Okay, uh, includes shipping and everything. Yeah. Uh, twenty nine ninety nine U.S. Okay. What were you saying yeah. about a floating rate? Yeah. So. What's EMS? You can, what, what's, what are you showing us, Mark? You can buy the YubiKey uh, for bitcoins, mm -hmm. and obviously it's just based off whatever bitcoins worth at the time. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Got you. And what, what are you showing us, Mark? What is that? That's the envelope that you use to ship it? Yeah, it's our EMS envelope that we're stuffing every morning. Oh, okay. Oh. With YubiKeys? Yeah. And there it All is. That stuff, so. There it is. That's the thing I pulled out and I thought it was a Xerox copy of a YubiKey. And then, yeah, exactly. It's almost as thin as the paper. It's so yeah, funny. Small. And I looked in the envelope and I'm like, oh my gosh, they sent me the piece of paper with no YubiKey. And I'm like dumping it out, going, where is it? 
That's so funny. So twenty nine ninety five. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good deal. I mean, if you've got some any kind of serious funds in there, you want to protect them, and that's a really a really good value. I, I would think. I would think yeah. shipping it from Tokyo, um, that's probably just barely more than the cost of the shipping. That's a really good deal. Yeah, it is, and I think going forward, it'll be kind of a no brainer for everyone. Hopefully, everyone learns from our mistakes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We can uh, we can ensure everyone counts are safe going forward. Yeah, you yeah. must not be making any profit on these Yubi keys. You're just doing it at cost, right? Essentially, yeah. I think yeah. maybe there's some places in the world where we'll make a couple dollars, but yeah, yeah. and some I think it'll loss. So yeah, so it'll walk, it'll be even out. Okay, cool. All right. So um, let's see what else the. Um, okay, so tell us. Um, is there any other? Is there any other big news you want to share? Well, oh, by the way, so your uh, the euros are on hold right now. We're going to know more by Friday. You're still doing the Great Britain pounds, the the um, UK pound, and the Australian yeah. dollars. Yeah, we are, and actually, we put a note on the on the site just moments ago saying, if people want to send euros to that account, it's possible, but there's a two percent uh, exchange fee. Yes, just by Barclays. Uh, yeah, so that's just by Barclays. Not by us, but it's possible to send that way. Oh, so it's possible to do euros right now through the Barclays uh, uh, bank with a two, some sort of a two percent exchange fee that they charge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. What about through the U.S. bank? Can you send euros through the U.S. bank, or they don't do that? Can you send euros to the U.S. bank? Yeah, uh, we don't have U.S. bank. We have a euro account on the Japanese bank, however. Okay. Where people can send euros. You can send euros to the Japanese bank. Yeah. And Makes is there an exchange rate there? Uh, what's the exchange rate here? Uh, it's not exchange. It's in, as euros. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's just uh, if you send euros to us, we can accept it as as euros. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, so you can. Uh, we can send euros from Europe to the Tokyo Japanese bank. With, with no exchange fee, just directly wire it as euros now. The only drawback is that you're sending an international transfer, is that it? Yeah, I think the fees are higher. The fees are a bit higher. Now, what, I mean, the, the other method, the other bank that you're sending euros to is, I mean, I don't know how it works in Europe, because in the United States, of course, domestic is domestic in the whole United States, but in Europe, every country is almost like a state so like if the bank is in Germany or something and I'm sending it from um, somewhere else uh, is that considered international if I'm sending it from the Netherlands to Germany are you talking to us first? yeah did you hear me <laughs> the um, is your speaker maybe you need to turn your speaker volume really low as low as you can I think it's the, or and put the speakers behind the the mic because I think that we're getting feedback on your end. Yeah, we're turning the speakers in a different direction here. Maybe okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Is right. Headphones and earbuds ha actually help. We'll have to remember that for the future. But anyway, so when you uh, when we okay the previous method when we send euros to the European bank. Ed, turn the speaker down a little bit too. When we send euros to the European bank. Um, is that considered international, like from the Netherlands to the European bank? I think so. What? Uh, from one of the separate countries to the UK bank, is that international? No, the UK is in SEPA too, so you can send a SEPA transfer I can't hear to it. the UK bank. So normally you have no fees on, from your bank, or really little fees. You can send us euros directly, and our bank will convert to pound for a 2% fee. Yeah. And the credit will be will appear next day on your MTX account. Okay. So basically, you can. You, you, it sounds like you can send euros to any of those banks. You just have to kind of shop around and see from wherever you are what the lowest fees are going to be, and if they are going to charge any kind of a, a conversion rate for the exchange to from euros to dollars, or or from euros to whatever. Is that right? Yeah, you can. Like, yeah. Figure, figure out what's going to work best for you. I think transferring to the UK bank is going to be cheaper than sending euros to. It depends on the amount. Okay. So yeah, you have to do some research and we're willing to work with anyone if they've got any questions. So okay. Shoot us an email. Anyway, got you. Yeah. Because I know that's a big issue for anybody in Europe. What was that? What was that? 
Okay, okay. yeah. Uh, as I was trying to say, um, if you is the amount you are trying to send is big enough, like for example more than 10,000 euros, mm -hmm. it's probably cheaper to send directly to Japan rather than paying 2% of exchange fees. If it's more than 10,000 euros, it's probably cheaper to send it to straight, straight to Tokyo. Probably. 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 Okay, but we have to do the yeah, math, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. You gotta shop around and check. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so we got that covered. Now, are there any other any other news that you want to? Have? Oh, oh, oh! What about the Canadian dollar? Are you set up for Canadian dollars directly? Oh, can you say again, there, Bruce? Canadian, the Canadian dollar. Are you set up for that? Uh, what's going on with Canada? Uh, Canada is wise. Well, we are waiting for the documentation to come from Canada, so we can. Uh, continue the process. Okay. All right. So that's that's uh, you're waiting for the confirmation from that. So that's coming any day as well. All right. This is all all good. All good. It's growing. All right. Cool. So let's talk about now your big announcement. Oh wait. wait. Do you have any other big any other news before we talk about your uh, big acquisition announcement? Anything else? Any other news you want to share with us about what's going on? I don't think so. Okay, um, volume's been really high. Everything's been uh, been pretty steady the last week or so. So, mm -hmm. super pleased with that and seeing confidence back in the market. So, yeah, it's good. That's great. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So now, tell us the big news: the acquisition. Yeah. When and when yeah. did this happen? Officially. Yeah. When did it happen? The acquisition. Uh, officially, it happened like probably last week. Yeah. So. Mm. So we've said that this like last week. Last week. So last week we uh, we finalized the the deal and we've officially acquired MT Gox Live under MT Gox or T Ban. So we're pretty excited about that and and all the tools that those uh, those guys are bringing with them to uh, to the MT Gox family. So MT Gox Live. Awesome. Show my screen. So MT Gox Live. Uh, show my screen there, Ed. MT Gox Live is a, a website and it's a company and it's an Android app and what is it a development team they have going on? What tell us about MT Gox Live? So yeah, it's, uh, it gives like a real time view of the price resistance mm -hmm. for uh, for our Bitcoin exchange, MT Gox. Mm -hmm. um, what else can you say about it? I know you're yeah, MT Gox really Live. Cool. Basically shows a real time uh, market. I'm sorry, say that again. Yeah, basically in empty box live you can see the market in real time. So you see, uh, well, the latest trades and the um, the depth. The depth, yeah. So it's it's a cool tool. It updates Very, the, uh, the graphs update in real time. The uh, the depth and all sorts of different charts I see here. And they, so it's, it's a website and it's a, they have a lot of tools and there's also an app for Android and there's one for iPhone that's waiting to be approved. Yep, yep, they've, uh, I think they submitted, submitted it a couple of weeks ago and it's still <coughs> pending. Oh, okay, I guess there's a new version that they're waiting for Apple to approve. Okay. And Mark's just pulling up uh, MT Gox Live on his Android. Okay, yeah, I want to talk about that because I know I, I have, uh, I was actually contacted the developer of MT Gox Live and I installed it on my phone and I want to talk about one of the really cool features. It's very innovative with Mt. Gox and that. But while he's pulling that up, this is probably a good time to take a quick break and thank our sponsors, our beloved sponsors, because without our sponsors, we wouldn't be here to tell you about all this, this cool stuff in the Bitcoin world. And um, they are usgoldcoins.com. usgoldcoins.com is Andy Gauss. Andy Gauss is my monetary guru. I mean, Ed and I have been fans for two or three years. He's got a national radio show twice a week. And um, he's all things money, not just Bitcoin. As a matter of fact, I Ed and I introduced him to Bitcoin. But he is an expert in, the, in world monetary systems and the history of money. I mean, he's just brilliant. He has a show called Real World of Money. And which he's actually bringing the Wednesday show to only one TV. So he's going to be here live every Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, 
uh, with the real world of money, hosting it with Patrick Timpone. So that's really exciting. And he also happens to be a sponsor. Um, you know, I couldn't believe in him more. Obviously, he believes in us and what we're doing, but I really, really couldn't believe in him more. We, as I said, we were fans for a few years. We became customers, and I, I wouldn't recommend anybody else at all when it comes to uh, investing in rare, which is called numismatic, gold and silver U.S. coins as an investment. They hold their value in two ways, um, both because of the, obviously, their gold and silver, the metal itself, but also because they're rare. So you have double insurance on the value. You've got the protection of it being rare and gold or silver. So, And he's an expert. He's an absolute expert. And if you ever get into trouble or you, for whatever reason you want to sell some of your gold or silver coins, he'll buy it right back directly from his customers. But that's Andy Gauss. And he is totally accessible. You can reach him anytime by calling 1-800-HOT-COIN. The website is usgoldcoins.com usgoldcoins.com and the phone number is 1-800-HOT-COIN. Just ask for Andy and thank him while you're at it for sponsoring the Bitcoin show and Only One TV because as I said, without these guys we wouldn't be here. And of course the famous Mezzi Grill, the world's first brick and mortar restaurant to our knowledge that accepts Bitcoin and they're right here in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, just a few blocks south of Columbus Circle. So whether you live here or you're passing through, I mean, everybody who's anybody either lives in New York or passes through New York at some point. So when you're in New York, make sure when you're doing all the sightseeing and everything, when you see Columbus Circle, go, oh, Mezzi Grill. It's only three blocks south of there. M-E-Z-E Grill.com, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. It's fantastic. And the reason we discovered it, again, is because it's one of Ed and I's favorite restaurants. We eat there one, two, three times every week. It's really healthy. And Dr. Frugal approved. It's very affordable. So, I mean, it's extremely healthy and affordable. I mean, how can you go wrong? And um, because Marwan, the owner, has become our friend, of course, they accept Bitcoin. Now they've got tons of media attention because they're the world's first restaurant to accept Bitcoin. Um, and, of course, Mount Gox. The, uh, Mount Gox is the, uh, the largest and oldest Bitcoin exchange. I'm not sure if they're the oldest, actually, technically. There are probably some that have been around uh, even earlier, but Mount Gox definitely is the leader uh, with something like 90% market share. MTGOX.com. Mount Gox is an easy, convenient way to buy Bitcoins online, sell Bitcoins, for multiple currencies and um, you know obviously we're interviewing them today but they're they're the market leader they uh, they have had problems with being hacked like Citibank and any other institution has these difficulties with you know basically they're growing pains we all know about growing pains because Bitcoin is new but um, they're growing at Bitcoin speed and they're improving and today's topic is is evidence of that we're talking about the YubiKey and how two-factor authentication will secure your account. So um, they're resilient. They're here for the long run. They didn't just run away with everybody's Bitcoins. They're here and they're not going anywhere. So we thank Mt. Gox for sponsoring the Bitcoin show and bringing us to you too. So thanks guys for, for that. <laughs> Did we lose Mark? <laughs> he went to get his Android. There he is. <laughs> so um, the, yeah, the mtgoxlive.com is the site. And then there's also an Android app in the market. Oh, wow. So that gives you, oh, that's the website, right? That's actually giving us the website. Yeah, that's the same thing I'm looking at. If you bring up my screen, yeah. yeah it's a website. Yeah, exactly. Okay. He's showing us on his iPad. It looks like an iPad. Yeah, and that's the website. So yeah, show my screen, Ed. So you see, yeah, that's the graph that we're talking about with the spread. And um, that's just super valuable that you can see all this data in real time. Is it updated real time or have to refresh? I think it's updating right now. Yeah, right? it's in real time. Oh, okay. In green, the middle, you've got the market, and you've got uh, the depth showing too on mm -hmm. both sides. Mm-hmm. The depth on both sides. That's really, really cool. Very sophisticated. And the big number, the number on the top right, in the large numbers, is thirteen point seventy-eight. Is that the last uh, price? Yeah. Yep. So that's the last and low and high. Okay, that's really cool. Empty Gox Live. And so now there's an app in the Android market called MTGOX Live, and that does the same thing, right? It gives yeah, me so essentially it's got um, the live market feed and uh, also the payments, the QR. Yeah. So you can pay or you can transfer Bitcoins with uh, 
QR codes as well? Yeah, now that's the thing that intrigued me because I was on the phone uh, recently with the developer. There it is. Okay, can you see that? <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Um, use Bitcoins Anywhere, Empty Gox Live, free download. Okay, so this is the, the, the uh, market. Is this the market page for the... Uh, what website is this? is this? This is a mobile application. The mobile application. Okay. There it is. Oh yeah, yeah. You see the screen sliding by. So you've got all the all the live data, but you also have the ability to transact point of sale. So that's what I wanted to ask you about because I know you guys have we we're we were calling it a voucher system, but um, what do you call it with the QR code that's for payment processing? Um, do we have a name for it? The QR code. What do we call mm -hmm. it? Just POS. Uh, no, for now the QR code. But there is some projects with QR codes. Uh, for now, you can just create uh, redeemable QR codes. Okay. So you can create a QR code on your phone right. and right. just show it to pay someone. Okay. okay, so that's what I was talking with the developer of that app, of the actual app for MTGOX Live, and he was calling it a voucher system, which it kind of makes sense. So you basically, with the app, you can log into your Mount Gox account and you can create a QR code which is a payment, um, a payment system that you can actually cr create a voucher that has value, and then you can then a merchant could scan that QR code to receive the payment, or another person that has the same app. Any any two people have the same app, then they have a Mt. Gox account. They could you could, I can create a redeemable QR code, so you can literally scan the QR code, and that is the payment itself. Is that how it works? Did I explain it right? That's exactly how it works. So super. Yeah. Easy for anyone to, to transfer money to, like you said, a friend or a merchant or really anyone with the same application. And so it's just app for app. Right now, the easiest way is they both have the same app. Oh, say that again. Um, so the easiest uh, way is if they both have the app. Still can't hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it, so the easiest way is if they both have the same app. Of course, yeah. yep. yep. Okay, all right. So... Um, and but that is cool because they so a merchant in order for a merchant to get set up to accept these all they have to do is have this app yeah exactly like your friend at the Meze Grill I'm mm -hmm. sure could uh, could make payments really easily that way yeah we're working as on new on the other way around basically allow merchants to create QR codes for example for products and people would just scan the products they want and pay those in real time Okay, so like an invoice, like a QR code that's an invoice? Yeah, so they'd have essentially a way to display the QR code and then the app would take uh, a picture or a photo of that mm -hmm. and then transfer the payment to uh, the associated account. Okay. okay, with their approval, I guess. They'd have to click something. Of course. Turn that yeah. volume down a little bit. So, see that, <laughs> sorry, that feedback is coming again. It's haunting us. So, okay, this is really slick. Are there any merchants that are set up that you know of yet that are actually using it? Are there any merchants that are... Mm, it's still quite new. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's only been around for, I think, maybe up to a couple weeks, so... Oh, only a couple weeks, okay. Yeah. All right. But, but, con but conceivably, like, any merchant can do this. I know Marwan has an iPhone, so he's using, you know, mybitcoin.com or something, but, but, and that works. But he can also uh, just, when he gets his Android phone, he can actually uh, install this app, and he can immediately, as long as he has a Mt. Gox account and an Android phone, he can install this free app, Mt. Gox Live, and then he's immediately set up to accept these vouchers. That's it. Yeah, and the transfers are instant, so you don't have to wait for the uh, for the Bitcoin network to go through all the confirmations. So it makes now, it really is the transfer uh, instant. I mean, for merchants really. The app has to have internet connectivity, right? It, can it happen offline? No, it has to be. Uh, yeah, it has to be live. So it has, it has to be, to be live online. Yeah. Okay, well, you have to anyway. So. But, but it is instantaneous without waiting for verifications or anything. So that's very clever. And I like the idea that you can, you, you're basically, um, okay, in the app, when I want to send uh, $8.59 in dollars to Mezzi Grill, I can enter uh, $8, can I enter $8.59? Will it automatically calculate the value in Bitcoin? So how do you, 
How do you type that in there? It's just in the app. You type in the amount, and then it yeah. creates the QR code. Yeah, so you just type in the amount that you want to transfer, and then set it up so the other person is uh, ready to receive. They take mm -hmm. uh, the scan of the QR code, and it's essentially transferred right into their account. So it's, it contains the amount, but it also just contains the authorization to take that from my Mt. Gox account. Right? What, what all is in that QR code? Does it also include like the authorization, or is that done... Um, no, it's Before. done because you because you're authorize it by creating the QR code. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, the first step is logging in through the app, and then the the rest is just done uh, for the address. Okay. And, uh, the, the redeem code. So the QR code acts as a coupon of value. You could literally like you could even like print it and give it to somebody or something, and it's like literally like value. Now, if it if it's not redeemed, can you cancel a QR code once you've created one? They yeah. can be cancelled. Do we have it? So you can just redeem it yourself. Okay. Oh, so you can just redeem it yourself. Oh, so anybody can redeem it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What if you create one and then it's lost? Like if you create it and then your your battery yes. dies. Yeah, it, it's in your account history, so you can. Oh. You can always. Oh. Okay, so you can redeem it right on mountgox.com in your account history. There's a way to redeem it there yourself. Yeah, I think it's actually through the the app. We'll have the history. Uh, the app has the history, but we make something more uh, easy to use. So yeah, it might not be too user friendly right now, but we're like I said, we've you know, we've acquired it, Mount Gox mm -hmm. Live, and we want to work with them to uh, to make it easier for yeah. everyone. Yeah, well, yeah, you just acquired it <laughs> like uh, days ago, so <laughs> we'll give you a little bit of a chance. But yeah, so. Um, but the ultimate idea is that you can either cancel it or redeem it yourself, reverse it if you create one. That's really slick, though. I think that's what's needed because we, we want a way to do instantaneous transfers, um, you know, with a trusted entity. And just that's what we know is needed. Just a quick scan, beep, and it's done. Because it's just super, super simple. If you could put it into a smartphone, then obviously anybody can integrate it to a cash register as soon as the demand is there. So, by the way, people, when you're in restaurants, ask them why they don't accept Bitcoin. I mean, you know, it's, it, this is a movement, and it takes you. It takes feet on the ground. So when you're in a restaurant, when you're in a gift shop, you're in a store, especially the little brick-and-mortar shops, you know, that, um, that uh, a, few, a little bit of extra foot traffic would make a difference to them, um, go ahead and ask them, have you considered accepting Bitcoin? Do you know how easy it is? You know, you can send them to bitcoinme.com or, you know, to Mt. Gox or whatever and explain to them how Bitcoin is benefiting them. And one of the things that merchants want, love to hear, you know, like, like for example, um, this just happened. I'll tell you this quick story. Um, the uh, couple, two days ago, we were in uh, one of the favorite, our favorite restaurants, um, that's right here in our building. And we're sitting there talking to the owners because we go there all the time. And I said, remember Bitcoin? I told you about Bitcoin. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to buy some of that because we heard it's a great investment. And because I had told them about it. And uh, I said, well, not only that, you want to accept Bitcoin in the restaurant because um, look what happened to Mezzi Grill. You know, they've had uh, routers there, uh, or Reuters, it's called NPR, you know, Al Jazeera English, uh, CNN International, Business Week, Smarter Money, everybody, just the stream of media coming in there. He's had more publicity than he ever dreamed possible because he accepts Bitcoin. I said, you guys could be the second restaurant in, the, in Manhattan to accept Bitcoin. And he's like, yes, yes, I want to do it right now, you know. And, and I hadn't even told him yet what they really want to hear. Um, it's, it's like cash. There's zero transaction fees. There's zero chargebacks. And there's no bank approval needed. He's like, yes, 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 yes. It's really an easy sell, you know, just to, to, to talk to the owners of your favorite restaurants that you go to and gift shops and stores and retailers of all kinds. Brick and mortar shops that accept Bitcoin make headlines too and tell them, you know, they can do a press release and you could be the first restaurant in Portland or Huntington, West Virginia, you know, or Paris, France or whatever. Um, that's, that is actually newsworthy and camera crews are going to come in and, and show how it works. So this is a really important point. You wanna, we want to help this Bitcoin revolution and movement take, you know, take hold. It's a lot easier than you think. Just talk to the owners of these shops and say, hey, why don't you accept Bitcoin? And if, you know, if they want a little bit of extra business in these hard economic times, it's a great way to do it. And publicity always helps, 
right? And th so this voucher system with the uh, MTGOX Live app just makes it that much easier to do these transactions, right? Yeah, it's kind of the missing link as far as Bitcoin really taking off. You know, there's been a lot of speculation. It's going to be all up to the merchants. So um, enabling them is our job and educating them is kind of the customer's job and letting them know that you know, they want to use Bitcoin. So yeah, right. absolutely. Exactly. And, you know, a lot of people say that, uh, you know, Bitcoin will really take hold once merchants accept it. I mean, I'm not really convinced that that's essential. I mean, it's, it, it's, to me, it's more of a symptom than a cause, but it doesn't matter. It's all synergistic. So as more and more merchants accept that it is a good thing because it, it, for one thing, it gets publicity. For other thing, it combats that argument. You know, people like, you know, certain reporters are, you know, almost mocking Bitcoin like, oh, the only thing you can buy is alpaca socks, you know. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we want to prove to them, you know, like, like NPR went to Mezzi Grill and they're like, well, this is the only restaurant in the whole entire world that accepts Bitcoin, almost like mocking it. And I, I really wanted to show them that, well, okay, now there's two, now there's three, you know, there's, there's one in Brooklyn, so this will be the third one in Manhattan, I mean, in New York City and so on. And to show them that within a week's time, there's now three, it's, it is spreading. And as people see that, see it spreading um, and proliferating, it's really an exciting thing. So it is, this is the thing. Businesses um, will not, uh, what am I trying to say? Businesses don't need to be convinced to accept Bitcoin. They will accept Bitcoin once everybody has Bitcoin. So it's this thing that goes hand in hand. You know, We have to have um, the fluidity and the liquidity of Bitcoin so that it's really easy for everybody to buy Bitcoin. Obviously they can on Mt. Gox, it's so easy. Uh, and with more and more apps on their smartphones, it's really, really easy for one person to buy a Mt. Gox and supply their whole uh, junior high class, you know, with Bitcoins or whatever. And then if everybody has Bitcoins, that's part of it. The other half of it is asking. Merchants will uh, feed demand. So if the customers are asking, why don't you accept Bitcoin? And if, if two or three people ask them and they really give them a com compelling argument, look, it doesn't cost anything. There's no bank involved. There's no approval process. It'll take two seconds for me to set you up. And there's no chargebacks and there's no fees. They're like, uh, <laughs> there's no downside. Just do it, right? It's very, very easy to sell merchants on doing that. So if you guys who, who care about Bitcoin, do that in your town. Go to your favorite restaurants and shops. You know the owners anyway. Say, look, why don't you accept Bitcoin? And you can set them up with this uh, voucher system with uh, MTGOX Live or whatever way you want to do it. Literally, how long does it take with this MTGOX Live? You install the app and basically you're done. You accept Bitcoin through the voucher system, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just download it and... Link it to your account. And That's it. I mean, if, if you create an account, you don't have to have any funds in it. You just create a Mt. Gox account, and then you install the app, and you're done. Right? And now you're a merchant that accepts Bitcoin. It's really that simple, right? So anybody who has this app can come in, and you can scan their barcode with your smartphone. It has to be an Android right now, though, right? But, uh, you know, you can get one of these cheapy Android phones that's by the cash register only for that purpose, and you're accepting Bitcoin instantly. And now, can they do that through the website if they have uh, if they have a browser, but they don't have an Android phone? Uh, yeah. yeah, they can. How do you do that with a website alone? Well, with a website alone, you use a withdraw page to withdraw, for example, bitcoins as a redeemable redeemable code. Okay. So you get a code you can just give to someone on the internet and instant messaging or anything. So um, you can email it to somebody? How would you how would you transmit it? Like so you, you can do that on your webs on the account and then how do I transmit that to somebody? Can I email it? What's the easiest way? Can I email it to them or Yeah you can send it any any way you like. It's just a string of text and it's like a coupon code. Oh so it's, it's just a string of text. Code. Okay. Just a normal um, coupon code. Now, can yeah. I do it directly from Mt. Gox account to Mt. Gox account without having to have that string? Like, literally, if I know your Mt. Gox account name, can I just send it directly to your Mt. Gox account name? Uh, no, no. You can't do it's that. Not okay. Now, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some restrictions on that for legal reasons, I think. Right. So. Okay. So I, I go to. Okay. I'm in my account now. How do I do that? How do I? Um, I do withdraw funds. Yeah. So you go to with the withdraw funds section. Go to my screen there. 
and then there should be a uh, camera which option it is but yeah redeem uh, as a redeemable empty gox code oh here it is here it is yeah US dollars as a redeemable amount gox code you see that let me make it a little larger so you can see there can you see that okay so US dollars is a redeemable amount gox code and then I put in the amount to withdraw oh okay so it's not specific to a particular merchant it's just an amount yeah. Right? Yeah, and then stuck. I just hit send request. Um, it says I'm not logged in. I guess I have to find my YubiKey. I've lost it. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> I already lost it. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, so now that's going to give me a string of numbers. And that, that long number is all I need to give someone. I can send it as a text message or an email or whatever. They just take that number and they can, what, they go to uh, upload funds and they enter that as a redeemable number? Yeah, they go to the add fund section and uh, just redeem it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a way that I can transfer funds in U.S. dollars or Bitcoin. I see that. You can do Bitcoin or U.S. dollars, either one, as a redeemable code. So I can withdraw it as a redeemable code and I just get that code to somebody else. They log into their Mt. Gox account and they can paste that number in and they've just... Uh, transmitted the money into their account. So you can do this even without the app. That means you can do it on an iPhone right now today with a browser, right? Oh, maybe you, say again there, Bruce. You can do that uh, right now today with an iPhone then. You can do that with an iPhone or an iPad if all you need is a browser. You could do it this way. It's a little bit more cumbersome, obviously. The app is easier. Yeah, yeah, of course. yeah the app is easier because it just creates a barcode and one person hits uh, send and the other person hits receive and you scan it and you're done. But it can be done with an iPhone or an iPad even today or anything with a browser by using this method. So that's really slick. Okay. Well, this is really exciting. Um, so what does the future hold? What, what is your prediction about what's going to happen in the, in the, like six months from now? Where, 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 will we, where will the Bitcoin world be in six months? What will the, first, let's the first start with this. What will, what will be the value? <laughs> Let me ask you guys this. What will be the value of a Bitcoin six months from now? That is a very good question. <laughs> you guys should know. <laughs> you run the market. Who knows? We'll, uh, we'll have to watch and see. Oh, you're not going to predict. Uh, okay. I say, I, I, you know, I famously say it's going to be a thousand dollars, you know, what did I say? A thousand dollars within a year. Yeah. But I keep really? saying that. I always say a thousand dollars within a year, but it, so it's like that window of time that whenever I said it last is what counts. <laughs> Eventually it'll be true. On that? What? Did you bet your bitcoins on that? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I'm not a betting man. <laughs> I just put, pull predictions out of thin air, but I don't actually bet on them. <laughs> That's interesting, though. What do you think? What do you think? What's it going to be in a year? You're from, who knows? I mean, the way it, the way it's gone up and then come back down, I think it's impossible to tell. So yeah, again, I think a big part of it is uh, enabling merchants. Yeah, exactly. Come down to that. And we are working. On this. <laughs> yeah, we're we're working on a different system for uh, uh, for POS as well. So something uh, separate from what's going to be done on the iPhone and uh, Android OS. Okay, wait a minute. You just held up a box, a white box, and you can't do that. You have to tell us more. What, 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 what is this white box? Yeah, what is this? <laughs> You're teasing <laughs> us. Only I am allowed to tease people. What is this? It says o Open Blocks 600. So what is that? Oh, is that like a, is that one of these open systems? It's like a server in a box. Yeah, basically we're going to use this to build a point of sale kind of machines mm -hmm. with a QR code reader on the little screen. Mm -hmm. So the merchant says, for example, uh, you have to pay three bitcoins. So you get your mobile phone, you show to the QR code reader, and you just pay instantly. Wow. So th now that's going to integrate with existing point of sale systems. Is there some standard for communicating with point of sale systems? As there are a lot of standards which make it a bit difficult, but we're going to try to get this working with m well, what people ask us. The most. We are already in contact with a few merchants who want uh, to accept bitcoins, but don't want to uh, make their process more complex. 
So we try to interface <coughs> those first, and anyone who comes first gets interface first. Wow. Okay, so are you taking orders for that thing yet, or what? When is that available? <laughs> for now, it's still being developed, so we are not taking orders from just everyone, but we accept, well, okay. we're trying to work with small vendors with mm -hmm. reduced capacity, we have time to test and okay. help us. So you're this. taking you're taking a waiting list. If somebody wants to get on the te the beta yeah. testing group, then they can contact you. If you're a small oh, yes. merchant and you wanna you wanna sign up to maybe yeah. test it for in the future when it's it, when it is ready for testing, yeah. they can contact you about that. So we're gonna beta test for a while. Do you think? Yeah, uh, we're probably going to beta test until at least November. Until at least November. Okay. Wow, that's exciting. See, I knew it. I knew there would be lots of point of sale systems that would just be plug and play with the existing cash register. I mean, I was surprised to find out when I did a li just a little bit of research that there's really only two major, major cash registers in restaurants in Manhattan. Like every restaurant in Manhattan uses one of these two vendors. And that's really exciting because if you can somehow get something to work with both of those, You've, you've got them all. You just have a plug and play device that just, you know, they're, they're good to go. Boom. Now they have not only MasterCard, Visa, American Express, you know, cash, uh, check. They've got a Bitcoin button, which is awesome. If they, you know, that's what they need. They just need a Bitcoin button. That's cool. That's what we want to do. Yeah. We want to enable, have to enable those merchants to take Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to change everything. Everything. Okay. So it looks like we're about out of time. So is there any, any last parting thoughts or words of wisdom or predictions you want to make before we wrap it today? Uh, I, think, uh, I think we're good. Okay. We have one thing to announce, and that is the, uh, you know, we're launching the Bitcoin show in many, many new languages. I mean, we already have every, a daily show in English. And we're doing weekly in Spanish, as you guys know. But now we're launching many other languages, you know, German, French, um, you know, I don't even know what all, Chinese, Japanese, Portuguese, on and on and on. The, the list goes on. And um, on Thursday, Thursday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern in New York, which is 9 p.m. Uh, in Tokyo, we're going to have you guys on to basically do the same thing again and launching the, the premiere edition of the French language. La Bitcoin, <laughs> so um, which will be great because then Mark can uh, Mark. I, I bet Mark will just ramble on and on in French, so that'll be fun <laughs> in his I'll, native I'll tongue. A lot more to say for sure. It's yeah. always a lot easier when you're uh, speaking your own language. I won't understand a thing, but somebody will have to translate it for me later. But uh, thank you guys for taking taking time out of your evening, and uh, I hope you catch the last train home tonight. And uh, thanks for joining us from Tokyo. As always, yeah, I think it's a good opportunity and uh, it's fun. All right. The top. Great. Ciao for now. See you guys. Bye. And see you guys same time tomorrow, 2 p.m. Okay. Eastern, Monday through Friday. Two days. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>